Hi, so in the previous videos we've been looking at the real business cycle model and some simplified versions of this model and so now we've got to a stage where we can actually simulate the RBC model to see how it performs. So what do I mean by simulating the RBC model? Well, we're going to obtain some random values of the technology parameter. This is our ZT and perhaps more accurately we can obtain some shocks to this ZT so we get some sort of like error terms and how this we have some exogenous shocks to our technology parameter in the model and then we can just feed these into our model which we have created with a number of assumptions uh, along with some initial conditions so we're going to assume that the economy is initially in steady state we have some given initial level of capital which we'll call k naught or capital k naught and then we can just add add our random values of the technology parameter into our model and then this will allow us to output a number of business cycle statistics so we can get out values for our output in time t our consumption and our capital stock and we can also do a number of things with our output we can get the standard deviations of these variables so standard deviation so we can look at sort of the measure of spread of them their volatility and also the cross correlations of these variables how they move with each other if they move in opposite directions when we have a pro productivity shock and so on and so when we simulate the RBC model just using some technology shocks we could even use estimated versions of actual real-life data to simulate this model to see how it performs against our real-life data but by inputting these we can then see how well the RBC model compares to the data does it meet the criteria criteria we require for a model to be good ie it says correctly that we have say cyclical consumption and investment the investment is more volatile than consumption and so on so let's just get into it we in the previous videos we derived this model we came up with these equations with of course our simplifying assumptions that we had full depreciation of capital i won't go over them all again but this is what our model basically says it's just governed by these equilibrium conditions and as as is very clear by these expressions these all depend on zt on zt on zt and at the logarithm of our technology parameter is persistent with respect to the previous period and our productivity shock so this this governs our model and what we can do is just feed in different levels of our parameter or yeah different levels of our technology parameter zt and we have an initial level of this capital stock k naught so then we can see how the capital stock evolves over time by moving on to K1, K2, and so on. Uh, so let's, I'm not gonna show all these simulations. This requires simulations with computer software. And, but th this has been done in a number of papers that have criticized and been advocating the RBC model alike. Um, but how does the model perform in these papers when it is simulated using just random technology shocks and even using data that we actually observe in say the US for productivity and technology. So the model actually does very well qualitatively. It gets a number of predi predictions correct. What do we mean by qualitative? That it means basically that it correct predicts the correct sign on variables. So if we have a positive productivity shock, how does our output go up? Does our consumption go up and so on? And the RBC model, this very simple model, does very well at predicting these things. So it has that the output, YT, the consumption, and the capital stock all move, or they co-move with our productivity, and they positively depend on each other. So that's a very key part of our models, that we have all these things going up with each other if our output increases our consumption and our capital stock is also going to tend to increase and it's always good that we have we have these basic assumptions that the the model predicts these basic things well and from the number of simplifying assumptions we have 
we have put into this model, it, it's not trivial that we're going to get these sort of qualitative predictions. So this was quite groundbreaking, this RBC model, that we could get these good qualitative predictions with such a simple model. However, this simple version of the model gets these quantitative predictions wrong. And when we think about quantitative predictions, we're thinking of the actual numbers. So for example, if we have a shock to technology of 1%, what's the exact amount that output's going to go up? Is it gonna go up by 0.5% or 10% or whatever? That's our quantitative. We're looking very specifically at the, at the effect this has in the data. And one key thing that our model gets wrong is that investment is as cyclical as consumption. If we go back to the assumptions we wrote down, we had that KT plus one, which in our model is investment, is going to be equal to alpha, beta, ZT multiplied by KT alpha, and our consumption is given by this same expression, but just multiplied by a different constant, one minus alpha, beta. And so when ZT varies, we, we kind of have kind of having very similar dynamics on our investment and consumption, and investment is equally cyclical as consumption. Whereas in reality, the data does not show this. We have that investment is a lot more volatile than consumption. We have things like consumption smoothing, that individuals smooth their consumption over the business cycle, whereas when it comes to investment, firms will invest heavily when we're looking at good future productivity expectations and they will cut down investment a lot in recession. So this, this prediction is not very good in the RBC model. And another prediction it makes is that we have the total labor is fixed over the business cycle. So no matter whether our economy is growing very quickly or if we're in a deep, deep recession, we made an assumption that we're just gonna have full labor supply. And we, we said that our L is, was just going to be equal to one in this model because we didn't get any disutility from working. And that, that just comes from an initial assumption we made. And in reality, we obviously, we have unemployment in recessions and there's a lot, our labor supply is very pro-cyclical in reality. This will increase in booms and decrease in recessions. So the model gets some key aspects of how these, these variables actually interact with each other and how they vary quantitatively very wrong. But this is just a function of the assumptions we have made. So investment is as cyclical as consumption because we assumed that we had full depreciation in the model. Our depreciation parameter delta was just one and the capital stock disappeared in the next period. Obviously this isn't true. We don't see, unless, unless we have our time horizons as say like a thousand years, then of course our capital is going to fully depreciate, but that's not really what this model uh, is looking at because we're looking at business cycles. So we're looking in the short term and in the short term, our capital stock does not completely depreciate. So this this is why this, this um, quantitative prediction is wrong. And the same with this total labor supply being fixed over the business cycle, as I've just said, this is this is why it's fixed because we've assumed it's fixed. And we need to alter these assumptions if we want to get a better model. And so lots of people get bogged down in the specifics of why this RBC model doesn't work, but it's because the RBC model we've been looking at right now is very, very simple. And it's meant to just give us a baseline to then expand this model. So that's what I'll be looking at in the next video. This was just a very brief video on simulating this RBC model and seeing how it performs. So check out the playlist for the next video where we'll look at fixing some of these problems. Uh, make sure to leave a like if this video was at all useful and to subscribe for future videos.